Hello to my first video about UFO 2000. This one is about setting up the game, installing tweaks. If you do not know what UFO 2000 is, then I'll do a little explaining. It began with the XCOM series. XCOM was a game from 1992. You may know the newer remake XCOM 2012. It's a remake of the original game and in the original game you had a turn-based tactical strategy game. There was a lot of other stuff in the game but this strategy part was very popular and it had one drawback. You could only play it against an AI. You never had the opportunity to play it against a human player and around the year 2000 people decided hey let's make a player versus player version of the game and that's UFO 2000. You can play it online or you can play it hot seat on a computer against someone else sitting both in front of it and it's a lot of fun but the installation process is not that easy the actual installation is easy but the settings are a little bit tricky and this is what I'm going to show you. First of all, you will have to get UFO 2000. There's already the first problem. If you go to the project site ufo2000.sourceforge.net, then you find two links which could point to the installer. There are binaries for Windows and installer for Windows. This binary for Windows link will not work. It doesn't find the folder, but the second one will help you. Current version is 0.9.1176. It's a beta version, which means it could be used for playing and it's rather stable, but it has some problems. But you will see about that when you play it a little. It's not everything perfect, but for the most part, it's just okay. I already downloaded this installer. It's on my desktop here. That's the one thing you need. The second part, which you actually do not really need, but is nice to have, is the original games. UFO Defense, that's the original XCOM 1 game, and Terror from the Deep, the predecessor, kind of XCOM 2. Those games are not open source, however UFO 2000 is. But that's the reason why it is not shipped with the UFO 2000 installer you need to pay for them. You can get them at Steam or from some friend if he has the media, but for some aspects of the game it's nice to have them. For example, you can have more maps or you can play on more maps with the original files, you have more units, you have more sounds. It makes the game more fun. This is why I recommend having them around, especially at installing time, but you could also copy them into the game folder later. But I'll do this right from the start. And the installing part, as I said, is rather easy. You will only have to think about having the desktop shortcut or not, where to put your installation. And then there's, there's the part to tell the game where are your XCOM games lying. I, s I say it's there and there. You have four options here. You can point where is the original game of XCOM 1. You could even use the demo of XCOM 1. You could tell it where are the files of Terror from the Deep or the demo of Terror from the Deep. And this is what I'm going to do now. Show it where are the original files of XCOM 1 and XCOM 2. You will not need those files anymore once the installation process has finished. This is a selection of manual files. I won't need a Russian one. I don't speak Russian, so I deselect it. You can choose from the others if you understand this language. And now I start the installation process. First, there are some files of UFO 2000 copied. And then the installer will begin copying the original files of XCOM 1 and XCOM 2 into the game folder UFO 2000. That's it. In principle, you could start the game right now, which is what I'm doing now. You can see it's starting, everything is just fine. 
could already start playing now. But as I said, I will show you how to set it up properly. You have this options dialog inside the game, where you can set up quite a lot, but actually it's not everything. You could choose your language if you want to, or you can, well, let's take German for example. See, not everything is translated immediately, but if you restart the game it will be. But I set it back to English. If I find English, which is here. These options you, you can set right here. You could enlarge the battlefield by the scale of two. It's good if you have a high screen re resolution, so objects aren't that small. I like to have that, ar that around. And I also prefer original XCOM graphics, so the interface looks much like the original game. I won't go into details of all the other settings. This is something more of your taste. It depends on how is your computer configured. Is the mouse fast or not? Do you want it loud or not? However, music isn't properly working at the moment. Maybe it will at some time in the future. Let's leave it at that and end the game. I go into the folder of UFO 2000. You can already see there are the folders of either the demo or the original games with the full version. You see all those files have been copied there. So I wouldn't need those files here on the desktop anymore. If I want to keep them around, that's fine, but I won't need them anymore for you for 2000. And here you will find the configuration files, those ini files. Here is the default ini file. This is one something you shouldn't touch. If you screw it up, you have kind of a backup uh, default setting which will work. I'm going to edit this ini file, ufo2000.ini. I'm going to use Notepad++. This editor is a little bit more capable. The Windows editor will get you some trouble. I can show you if you I haven't seen this before. Ah, it's working. Sometimes it does not. Then you have all those uh, lines in one big line because the Windows editor doesn't work with Linux, Linux line breaks. But in this case it seemed to work, okay. Well, what's important here in this file? First of all you can choose your keyboard layout. It's especially important if you are not from the US or in England. For example, if you want to switch to a Portugal um, keyboard layout, you could set it here. Also the language can be chosen. This is one of those aspects you could choose in the game in graphical user interface. But you can also do it, of course, in this configuration file. You could also um, choose more keyboard layouts. Secondary one, in you could switch in-game. But I usually don't use this. Um, and there's this general part. Now it's getting interesting. You see here with and hate. This means what part of the map you see, that's the size of it. It's not the resolution of the entire game. As you can see, those values are rather odd for a resolution. They are just about the size of the map you can see. You can choose them within the limits of your screen resolution. It must be smaller, then you're fine. That's okay. These are settings you could also change inside the game interface. You, if you want to choose a map 4x4 or 6x6, it will be written in here. These are the parts you have already seen inside the menu. Map scroll speed, bullet speed. You can set them in the graphic user interface, so I won't go into details on them. And there is the screen res resolution part. This one is to be edited carefully. If you screw this up, you will end up with a game which is showing a black screen and not um, responding to any inputs anymore. At the moment it's 800 times 600, which is a resolution that's available on this computer, so shouldn't create any problems. But you could also say, let's choose 1024, 768, which is available. 
if you screw this up, as I said, you will run into trouble. The same goes for color depth. Music volume, as I said, doesn't really matter at the moment. In former times, UFO 2000 had the ability to play music files in the background. At the moment, there are some compatibility issues, so this volume doesn't matter at all. It doesn't play music. So this is also rather useless at the moment. You could choose your own music files for several situations. Leave it at that, as we cannot use them at the moment. These parts you can change. This decides which graphics is shown in certain situations. For example, if you are in the main menu or if you are at the loading screen or at the end of uh, one battle, you can see these graphics you enter here. You can choose the font size of your game. I'll leave them here at 12. You could also choose the kind of graphic user interface you will be presented. You could, for example, say, hey, I like Windows 95 a little bit better. Let's change it to that. I, for one, like it. If you want something else, you have a variety of options to choose from. Now let's get to the server part. That's an important aspect. As you can see, you can choose a login name. It, you can set up if the game is logging in automatically. But what you cannot see at the moment is if you chose a password. It will also be written in here as plain text. So refrain from using important passwords. If someone gets this ini file, he knows your password. And if you have used them and at other places, they will be able to, to um, take advantage of them. So don't take passwords which are important as they are written in plain text in here. These are settings from the game itself. In another video I will show you how to change them in-game. So I won't go into details here. What's important here is the full screen value. If, if the game starts at full screen, you have to set it to 1 here. I'll leave it at 0. Point is you can always switch between full screen and windowed mode somewhere deeper than the main screen. and the main screen you cannot change it, but in other screens you will have the opportunity to press F10 and it will switch this, but this decides how the game is started. If you want to have full screen at the beginning, set it to 1. Those fonts, I would, well, not change them, as you will have some um, bad experience with them. They don't look very well on current computers. Do we want a sound check? Takes a few seconds on even on modern computers. I'll leave it at zero. Won't work. This, this end sound signal, this is something you could also set in the GUI. Or you have this prefer XCOM graphics. So most of them you can set into, in the game itself. This is the scale fa factor I already told you about. I set it to one because I like it a little bit bigger. So that's in general it. Keep in mind not to use important passwords. Keep in mind not to screw up resolutions or you will have a game that won't start properly. And you have various possibilities to adjust it to your language. And in general, that's it. I will also create another video like this for Linux. Linux will give you a little bit more trouble with this, as there is no installer for it. You will have to compile it yourself. But in principle, it's all the same with the game itself. There are a few aspects you should be aware of. This game is not multiplayer, uh, multi-user capable, which means you install it for everyone. This means you have no saved games or settings for each logged in user, but it will always be in this game folder. So this ini file goes for everyone. If you save replays, it will also go for everyone, which also means everyone must have writing permissions there to save replays, save settings. If you do not give them the permission to write here, then 
das Game will not save those replays, will not save settings, will not save squad files. And this is kind of a problem for every user who ha hasn't administration rights. So be aware of that, that, that this game is from a time where multi-user systems were not very common. Thank you for listening and look at my other videos about UVU 2000. <laughs>